Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> It was the worst winter we'd ever had in Dodge. The worst one I'd ever seen anywhere on the plains. It had been a short summer with the rain starting a month early and turning to snow and sleet before the end of September. And from then on, it was one blizzard right after another, roaring down off the flat basin, freezing the creeks and the ponds and piling up snow in the gullies. Stock suffered and men suffered. And it got so nobody in town would do anything or go anywhere unless there was some reason they just had to. It was a winter that started out cold, and it kept getting colder. One of the few places in town where a man could go to get warm was a long branch. They had a big pot-bellied stove there that would take four-foot chunk of cottonwood. Most nights they kept it red hot. Matt, you want to know a secret? Yeah, sure, Kitty. What is it? I'm in love with a man who invented woolen underwear. You? <laughs> Under that? You're darn right. Don't let the dress fool you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can't do much good. About as big as a saddle blanket for a cotton tail. In this weather, anything helps. How about a drink, Matt? Well, I was kind of waiting around for Doc, Kitty, but I guess that baby of Miss Tucker's turning out to be pretty stubborn. The Tucker's? Another one? Uh-huh. If you was a man, you'd wear a gun. Well, it started out to be a quiet evening. You. Oh, it's Ned Crater and old man Sideroy. Uh, I think it's just a talking fight. No, Kitty, this one's due. It's been building for a week now. Oh? I'll see you later. All right. You ain't scared. Why don't you borrow a gun? Anybody in here alone, you one, they'll be glad to see you called for once. You're yellow, Josh. You're mean, dirty, and you're yellow. All right, Crater, you've had your say now. Well, how do you feel, Marshal? How would you feel about it if you was in my place? Probably the same way you do, but this kind of talk's not going to help you any. Now, why don't you take a walk? Go have a drink somewhere else. Oh, huh? sure. While that old skinflint stands Crater, there... Crater, I said and... take a walk. I'll get... All right, Marshal. That was well handled, Marshal. You join me for a drink? No, thank you. Side room. What makes you like you are? I don't believe I understand you. Joshua Sidro, the meanest man in town. Do you like being thought of that way? I'm not much concerned, Marshal, one way or another. A prudent and successful man's always envy. Maligned by fools like Ned Crater. That hay barn of yours is full to the roof. You got five times what you need to hold your stock through the winter. Crater's on a ragged edge. He's desperate. A couple of loads that probably carry him. You wouldn't even miss it. Well, the hay's for sale. Oh, yeah, sure. And twice what it's worth. A thing is worth whatever you can sell it for, Marshal. He's no better than the other nesters. They're buying from me. They must got cash. It's his first year on the land. He's got no cash and no credit. You know that. Then he should have been more industrious. Shown some foresight. He was caught short by the early rains, the same as the rest of it. Now, what's the use? You know, Joshua, someday you're going to end up being the richest man on Boot Hill. Well, Ned Crater will never put me there. He might. He's worked up enough. Yeah, he's like all failures. Talks big and does small. He's a fool. And I'll be here long after he's starved to death. <laughs> Good 
Thanks, Mr. Dillon. The more wood you chunk into this cussed stove, the less heat it seems to give off. That's a cold morning, Chester. Throw some buffalo chips in. Yes, and burn out the grates again. If this jailhouse can't afford a halfway decent stove in weather like this. Well, forevermore. Look there. Look who's up bright and early this morning. What? Uh, Joshua's side rope. Mm. Leading the pack horse. Maybe he's going to pull out, Mr. Dillon. That's wishful thinking, Justin. I wonder why he's coming here. Marshal! Marshal Dillon! Well, I guess there's only one way to get it over with. Marshal! Yeah, Joshua. I brought in the body of my son, Jabel. He was murdered during the night. Chesterfields, they satisfy. This Christmas, give everyone Chesterfields. Chesterfields are easy to give because they come ready to give in a bright red special holiday carton that's wrapped in its own colorful Christmas ribbon. Everyone enjoys Chesterfields' smoother, cooler smoking pleasure. So, to all your friends this year, say Merry Christmas with cartons of Chesterfields. No wrapping, no tying. They're easy to give because they come ready to give. Chesterfields, in the bright red special holiday carton. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfields, they satisfy. He took young Jabel's body up to Doc's office and he went to work on it to see what he could find out for me. Chester and I waited in the ante room. And old Joshua told us what had happened. I had Jabel staying up every night this week, keeping watch on the barn, same as last night. That hay's valuable and I didn't aim to lose it. Yeah, you didn't wake up during the night, you didn't hear anything. Huh? Clear conscience makes a sound sleeper, Marshal. When Jabel wasn't around this morning, I thought he must be out in the barn doing his chores. About 7.30, I went out to the barn looking for him. Lock was broke off the door. Finally, I found him laying there in the barnyard, covered with snow that fell during the night. Any uh, hay missing? No. I figured after they shot Jabel, he got scared and ran off. Uh, Matt, it's pretty hard to tell much. It was colder than blue blazes last night. The bodies froze stiff. I got the bullet, though. It was a rifle of some kind. Wasn't any six-gun. Marshal. If you have no more questions, I'll go and make arrangements for a coffin. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Now, uh, Joshua. Huh? I, uh... I'm sorry about your boy. I don't regard sentimentality as being a function of law. It's not sympathy I want. It's retribution. Good day. Mean? Mean. That is the one meanest man I ever seen. It's too bad it kicked back on j he was a good boy, Matt. He was warm-hearted and generous. He was nothing like that old man. Yeah, I know, Doc. How do you figure it, Mr. Dillon? And I'm afraid there's only one way to figure it, Chester. All right, let's saddle up. We'll go out and get Crater. <laughs> Sign of life, Mr. Dillon. There's smoke coming out of the chimney. Yeah. Well, Marshal Dillon, Chester, come in. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Miss Crater. 
Huh? I'll pour you some coffee. Uh, we're kind of pushed for time, ma'am. Is, uh, is Ned here? No, it's just me and the young un. Uh, hey, you know where he is? No, I don't, Marshal Dillon. He's been gone since last night. Hitched up the big wagon, took the four mules and his saddle horse and left. Uh, here. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, he, uh, didn't tell you where he was going, huh? No, it just said he wasn't going to sit around while the stock died of starvation and, and me and the young one went hungry, no matter what it costs. He, he said if he wasn't back in five days, I, I was to sell out and go home to my folks. I don't understand what he meant. Well, there's no use reaching for trouble till it gets here, man. Well, somebody told him yesterday about a camp of Kiowa Indians out toward Badger Crossing. I thought maybe he was going to try to find them and borrow some hay from them, maybe, but I, I don't know. And with this blizzard fixing to hit, I'm worried, Marshal. Oh, he'll probably be back by tonight, ma'am, tomorrow morning anyway. How's the boy? Oh, well... He's been a little croupy all week, but I, I guess in this kind of weather, you have to expect that. Sure, half the kids in Dodge have got a touch of it. Well, we better be riding on, Miss Crater. Well, I'll tell Ned you was here. Yeah, you do that, will you? And thank you very much for the coffee. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Well, what do you think, Mr. Jones? I don't know, Chester. Them Kiowas don't do much loaning. No, but they'll trade. He didn't get any hay at the side, Rose. You figure he went on the Badger Crossing? Well, there's only one way to find out. The storm really hit us a couple of hours out. Blinding snow on a cold, driving wind. The trail was already a foot deep, and it got worse. The horses didn't like the going and kept trying to tail off to the wind. Times it got so bad we had to take shelter in a coulee and wait it out for a while. When it came dark, we hadn't made over eight or ten miles. And after all that trouble, we still come pretty close to missing it. Did you hear something, Mr. Dillon? I'm not sure, Chester, but pull up. Yeah, but whatever it was, it came from over there toward the creek bank. Sure sounded to me oh. like... Th that's what it is. It's somebody yelling. Yeah, it's down that way. Come on. Ah. Oh. Over here! Over! Watch out for that bank, oh. Chester. I see it. Oh. There he is, Mr. Dillon's wagon. is down in the creek. Yeah, it's Ned Crater's rig. He's broke through the ice, bogged down. Give me a hand here. Cut those Hurry. mules loose and get them out of there, Crater, before you lose them along with the wagon. They can pull out all right. But if I leave the box here, loose the lines, they'll founder. Ride into the water, Marshal. Grab the lead mule's halter and get him straight. They'll pull her out. All right. That water's freezing, Mr. Dillon. Well, that's not going to get any warmer before April. Come on, Chester. All right, keep the lines tight, Crater. Yeah, I know. All right, get her on there, mule. the devil are you doing clear we'll out here? We'll talk about it later. Kick some wood out from under that yeah. snow and let's get a fire going before we freeze to death. I sure wasn't aiming to lose that load of hay, Marshal. Well, you just about did in that creek. Where'd you get it, Crater? A band of Kiowas. Back at Badger Crossing. I... Traded him my saddle pony. Now that pinto mare has a lot of horse for a load of hay. Well, what are you going to do when you ain't got choice? That argument you got into with old Joshua's side row. What started it, Crater? Well, that boy of his, young Jable, stopped by our place a couple of days ago. Told me he'd see to it I got at least one load of hay. And then when I run into old Joshua in the long branch and told him about it, he just laughed. Old devil. He said to 
kid was out of his mind that he didn't have no more authority around the place than the other cow hand. You got your rifle with you? Uh, yeah, sure. I'd like to take a look at it. All right. I won't guarantee what condition it's in. I've been so plain busy, I ain't had time to do nothing right. Here, here you are. Thanks. Yeah. Where'd you claim this gun last? Well, a couple of weeks back. I told you it was in pretty bad shape. Couldn't be much worse. I wouldn't try to fire it till I got the rust out of that barrel. Marshal, what's all this about? Jabel's side row was found lying dead in the barn lot this morning. He'd been shot. So that's what you're doing out this way. Yeah, that's it, Crater. Well, Marshal, if, if you figure I killed Jabel's side row for this load of hay, you're wrong. I'd do most anything to keep my stock from starving, but not that. Not killing. I know. Then you're not arresting me? No. Well, I figured you thought that I... did I... at first, Crater. That's why we rode out to find you. But I guess you couldn't have shot him. Not with your rifle in that condition. Do you mean that I can go home? Yeah. And Chester and I will give you a hand with a wagon. Thanks, Marshal. Well, after we get Crater home, what are we going to do, Mr. Dillon? Have a look at a barn full of hay, Chester. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chester B. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making, gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily. Let's you enjoy all the flavor. And the Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. I'd rather do than go prowling around old Joshua's barnyard in the middle of the night. This won't take long, Chester. No, it won't take long for a man to freeze out here. man did freeze out here. Right about here, in fact. What are you doing with that gun, Mr. Dillon? I thought we was being quiet. What are you going to shoot at? Well, the moon makes as good a target as anything. So? That made enough racket to raise it dead. I hope you're right. Hold it right where you are. I got a rifle on you. All right, calm down, Joshua. It's Matt Dillon. Marshal, what's the meaning of this? What's happened to that clear conscience of yours, Joshua? You're not sleeping as sound as you claim you were night before last. I thought somebody was after my hay. Uh, who'd you have in mind? I don't know. That's what I come out to see. Shot woke me up. It didn't night before last. The shot or the dogs. None of it woke you up. Well, what happens once don't have to happen the same way again. No. In fact, some things can't happen the same way again. What do you mean, Marshal? When you only got one son, you can only kill him once. Now, what was it, Joshua? An argument? Did he finally stand up on his feet and defy you? No. No, you're wrong, Marshal. You know, you're the only man in Dodge with a lock on his barn. You tell me something. Did Jabel have a key to it? No, he didn't. And what made you think he was out there at his chores yesterday morning when he didn't even have a key to get into the barn? All right. I shot him. He was a thief. He was your own son. I caught him in the middle of the night, breaking into the barn. He was going to take a load of hay to the craters. Give it to him, mind you. 
He ignored my orders, cursed me, and I shot him. He's the same as any other common thief. The jury will see it that way. I wouldn't count on it, Joshua. All right, now give me the rifle. Give it to me. All right, let's go. Wait a minute. I got a nail up that door. I can't leave it open. I got valuable hay in that barn. Don't worry about it, Joshua. The neighbors will take care of it for you. Now, come on. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. Smoke much milder. Burn evenly. B, better tasting. Draw more easily. You enjoy more flavor. C, cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. You know, land was cheap on the frontier because there was so much of it. Yet on our next gun smoke, a man is killed over a few acres. But that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, John Daner, and Virginia Christine. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Christmas seals give your cards and packages that holiday look. Help fight tuberculosis. Buy and use Christmas seals. Make Christmas their red letter day, their L&M red letter day. Give them the Christmas cards and full of America's best. Yes, give L&M's on Christmas Day to friends who smoke the builder way. L&M's got everything, the gift for Christmas Day. This is it. For Christmas... L and M filters and the handsome Christmas carton. No fuss with ribbons or paper. It's all wrapped and ready to give. This Christmas, give L and M Christmas cartons. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. <laughs>